Breakfast with Bob. Macho Man, thanks so much. Welcome again to Breakfast with Bob, St. George edition. My name is Bob Babbitt. We are brought to you by Master Spas, Zion's Bank, Quintana Roo, Form Smart Swim Goggles, Clash Endurance, Premium Plus Sports, and our Challenged Athletes Foundation. Our next guest, Olympic silver medalist, Lisa Norton, two-time Olympian, right? Three-time. Three-time <laughs> Olympian. Look at you. Gosh. And now you were close this year in cycling. Well, I, I had to go for it, but it ended up not happening for me. Yes. Yeah. And, but more importantly, 2021, your first Ironman win and your first Ironman. I know. It's pretty crazy, right? Lake after Placid. I know. And that's after how many years in the sport? I uh, finally got see, there. See, we were just interviewing a young woman from Switzerland who's doing six Ironmans this year. You've been in the sport <laughs> 20 years. And this will be your third? Yeah. You're that's a, a good ratio. smart... Yeah, that's a great thing, right? <laughs> well, I had my, uh, one of my first coaches said, Iron Man, that you can do when you're old and slow, not before. So uh, I guess that's the point where I'm at the moment. <laughs> 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 so that Iron Man... I remember watching that online, Iron Man Lake Placid in 2021, and you're leading, and Heather Jackson was coming. She was coming for me big time. <laughs> big time. <laughs> yeah. But in your mind, you're thinking, all I got, Heather's already qualified for Kona. I'm just trying to qualify to go to world championship. Yeah, I had, like, my coach really like knocked it into my head that you're here to qualify. You're not here to be a, you know, super human or do right. something unreal. You're just going to secure that quali qualification. Right. So I was told by Kalle, who was on the phone with the coach, to slow down, slow down. <laughs> don't stress about Heather, don't stress. And yet you kind of in the race, racing, but trying to contain yourself and not doing anything stupid. Um, and she got really close. She got to 50 seconds. And that was with like seven Ks to go. So I could feel the pass, yeah. pass was happening. It was coming. Well, and when you're leading for that long, you have ownership of that win. You don't want to give that away. It's, it's kind of like you know, when you can sniff it. It's like with good coffee. You know? right. When you can sniff it, you want it. Of course. So, of course, like this is a part of me, like, you know, get it together. Just keep on going. Yes. You know, maybe you can, like, put this in the bag. And then she cramped. And then she cramped. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going. But, you know, that's, that was the hardest couple of Ks in my life. Was so when really? she cramped, and that gave me another five minutes. Yes. And the only thing I had to do was get to the finish line. Yes. And that was hard because it then I stopped racing. When you race, you have that pressure. You keep on going. And now it's like, okay, it's safe. Surviving. I'm just going to get there. Yeah. And my legs and my head got destroyed. How tough was that transition from Olympic format, because you were in that for a long time, to 70.3 and Ironman? Because it's, it's not like you're going from, okay, I'm running a 10K and I'm going to go to the half marathon. It's... You're, it's, it's a huge leap, especially in the amount of hours you're training and racing. It's, it's very, very different. Uh, the whole energy system and how you work during the race right. is different. The way you train is different. And to be honest, I don't feel like I nailed the half Ironman distance yet. Right. I never really had a super good race that I'm proud of. Ironman worked better for me. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah, it's more, uh, I have so many years of the sport in the body and a lot of endurance and it's more to contain yourself, not race the others, right. but to just, just focus on yourself, yourself and yeah, do yeah. what you can do. And I really like that. Like, it's great. I'll, I enjoy it. The, uh, the thing that you, you know, like when you start focusing on 2018 uh, Swedish National uh, Cycling TT Champ and 19 Swedish National Road Cycling Champ, when you start focusing on the cycling aspect of it, that certainly has to help the triathlon part. It does. It's, it's interesting when you sacrifice parts. So, like, basically what got me into more cycling was an injury uh, from running. Right. Okay, so I can't run. What can I do? I can ride my bike right. because riding the bike normally doesn't hurt. Uh, and then I ended up being pretty good. And I noticed that when really I take good. away yeah. the running and most of the swimming, I get more power. Right. And when you push something, so you have more time and more energy and you improve something, that is later easier to sustain. Right. So once you push a level up, you can sustain it. So that's what happened to me, is that I allowed myself to focus more on one discipline. I improved that and also got shitloads of experience racing right. world champs, being in situations that I've never been in triathlon. And then you get back to triathlon and it feels... Like easier, <laughs> and well, you push your boundaries. Also, when you were in cycling, there's no pressure. I mean, exactly. You're, you're yeah. a three-time Olympian. When you when you're introduced at a triathlon, 
you know, you're an Olympic silver medalist, three-time Olympian. And then you go to a cycling event and you're sort of like, uh. let those other gals. <laughs> well, to be honest, it's almost like a negative thing for me. So I heard, overheard when I was in Yorkshire for the World Champs, <laughs> the Danish girls, they were like, oh, look at that number 42. She's a triathlete. We got to beat As her. Like, it's, a, it's a bad thing. She probably can't ride a bike. <laughs> she's probably really bad in corners. And it was like, you know, I'm a three-time Olympian. It's like, oh, she's a triathlete. She like, can't handle out. a bike. Yeah. We do have a bad <laughs> reputation. Like, no, I got to show you, girls. Yeah, That's right. show you, you know how to do that. So g- growing up, was it, was it swimming? Was it running? What were you, what were you sports uh, Horse riding. Horse riding. Yeah. I could see how that could lead yeah. to three Olympics in triathlon. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so I did eventing, which is three disciplines. Right. Dressage, oh, show so jumping, okay. you know. Yeah. And you put in a lot of work. Yes. It's really hard. Um, a lot of times you're hungry, you're tired, you're cold, you're too warm. Yes. Um, so it's very it similar. And it costs a lot of money. So it's very, very similar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, and besides the fact that you're spending a ton of money on the on the horses, uh, what led you to you know to triathlon? Uh, it was actually my mom's 40th birthday. Okay. So my mom is an interesting character. She's a strong lady. She's a midwife. She drinks a coffee with a spoon standing straight. So it's you know very strong. Oh. You don't move her around very easily. Like you know if she's got her head onto something, that's the way it's going to be. And she wanted for her 40th birthday to ride her bike to Italy. From Sweden. From Sweden. Uh, from Sweden, Sweden okay. Yeah, which is quite a far distance. That is, how far is that? Uh, 2,000 kilometers. <sighs> so and did she have a background in cycling? No. Not at all? We couldn't change a tire, like a flat tire when so we started. So, oh, so she said, <laughs> and then, so this is, she wants to do it, which yep. means you I have had to go. To do it. Yeah, exactly. How many siblings? And no siblings. So, it's it's you know, so yeah, now that you have all the pressure. Yeah, yeah you've I had go. to do it. Um, and I was 15, turning 16 that year. Okay. So getting a little bit more mature and yeah. stronger. Yeah. Uh, so we're kind of on the same level. We bought two bikes, yes. old bikes, road yeah, bikes, yeah. with like gears on the frame. Yeah, 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 yeah. Old school ones. I uh, had a tent. We couldn't change a tire. Uh, we never ridden more than 90 Ks. And then we started riding down to Italy. And you, you started riding yeah. Italy? Yeah. And how long did it take? Uh, 19 days. <laughs> and you, but <laughs> any flat tires? Uh, yes. So in the beginning, the tactic was one was staying with the bike. Yes. And the other one was taking the front wheel or whatever wheel that was uh, punctured. Yes. And she rode to the next town. Yes. Had it fixed by a guy or a mechanic, rode back, put the wheel back on, and then we continued. Uh, because you guys couldn't fl- finish. No. <laughs> and after a while, we realized, like, this is not very effective if we, <laughs> like, you know, keep on moving forward. Uh, and some dude down in Germany helped us out and taught us how to change the tire, and then we could do it ourselves. Then you were, so but my you mom said in the beginning, it's like, you know, don't worry, Lisa. There'd be men all the way down to Italy. They can help us. Oh, like uh, they'll just be standing along yeah. the side of the road, <laughs> out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. And there'd be some guy on a farm she, on a tractor. She was right. Yeah, she was there right. was people. Yeah. Guys were there to the help. Guys were there to help all the time. That's what guys are on this earth <laughs> for. <laughs> exactly. Is we're here to help. That's <laughs> what we're for. We're sort of Sherpas, professional <laughs> Sherpas. So then you you get to Italy. Then do you fly home? You get rid of the bikes. What, what do you uh, do? No, <laughs> actually, yeah. this is the worst part. So we took a tourist bus back home. Back home. <laughs> which took with like the two bikes. days with the bikes. Yeah. Oh my God. But the were like the worst part of the story. I would love to show you some beautiful pictures and yes, albums. Nothing. Uh, our bag got stolen on the first night. With your camera in it? With the camera, with a notebook, with everything. Oh. All the film roll, you know, had uh, rolls back in the yeah, days. Yeah, yeah. Because we put it out from the tent. We didn't want to leave it in the tent. Went for dinner. The bag got stolen. And it was everything with all everything the Everything is gone. Yeah. So it's all, all in here. Uh, b- but it's there it's there yeah, 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 sure. yeah. There's <laughs> some, I would like that photo that would be yeah, a, that there's a lot a of nice really one. interesting ones <laughs> so after this after the bike tour right then was like okay I'm going to be a professional triathlete I could see how that transition uh, well <laughs> exactly it's uh, straightforward <laughs> I did my first triathlon yes. after that so I came back to Sweden and near my hometown was a small fun triathlon right. So I did that because I could, you know, basically ride my bike like a professional. Right. Swimming. I learned to swim breaststroke in school. Sure, you can handle it. And everyone can run. Right, and of course. So I thought it was a good How challenge. How hard could it be? Exactly. And I won. I won, I think it was a five pack of socks. And I felt <laughs> like a superstar. And I loved it. And so then you wanted more. Yeah. And what I realized, so coming from the horse riding, there's a lot of dressage, there's judges, and they like putting deal points. With cr- and you have to like you know wear funky clothes and preferably have a super cool last name with See, like you know something um, uh, old school uh, expensive. Yes. What I love about and this, and in triathlon, yeah, yeah. it's just how much are you willing to hurt? 
you know, how much you could I like suffer. That. And I, I was pretty good at. And suffering. nobody can make. Nobody is looking, or f- they can say anything. No. It's just getting from this point yeah. to this point, and the first person wins. There's not points on your swimming technique or you know, running. Nothing. It's just pure performance. So I, I bet you that that really appealed to you. It did. It was simple. And I was always prepared to do a lot of work and yes. work hard. Right. And triathlon is a sport that, you know, if you want to do that, then you quickly become better. It rewards you. Yeah. It rewards the people who it are does. dedicated yeah. and who are disciplined. Yeah. So that was how I started. And, and then when did you realize, okay, I actually can be pretty good at this? So this was year 2000. Uh, 2002, I raced my first competitive season when I had a license. Yeah. And I won junior nationals. Yeah. In 2003, I was 10th at Junior World Champs in New Zealand. So I think that was... That was sort of like, okay, yeah, okay yeah. I'm going to... So at that point, now it's Olympics, right? Yeah. And what was your first Olympics? Uh, Beijing. Was Beijing, 2008. Beijing, 2008, yeah. 2008. You're too young. Uh, th- you were just getting going in 2004. So 2008... Yeah, exactly. For, what so was that experience like going there? 2003, yes. I raced my first Junior Worlds and my last. And then four, I was watching on the telly. Um, seeing these amazing performances. Yes. And then I You're knew from Athens. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I knew I really wanted to become an Olympian. And then 2007, I won under 23 World Championships. Yeah. And beginning of 2008, I was on the podium with Emma Snowsill and Vanessa Fernandez for my first World Cup <sighs> win. Or I was third World Cup podium ever. Wow. And that's when there was something in me that made me believe that I. I was not just a backmarker or a girl from Sweden who was competitive. I was actually there and I could do something good. And it's something switched in my head to I want to be an Olympian and I want to do something cool at the Olympics. Yeah, you, you don't so want to just be pack filled. I got to Beijing uh, and I was ranked pretty good in the world. I was third at Europeans that year yeah. and I had a really good season. And I was 18th in the race. Okay. And I was crying after the race. I was very disappointed. First time Olympic, so yeah. But I had like, and I was training hired, with yeah. Daniela Roof at the time. We were training training mates, and she was seventh. And my swimming, because obviously learning to swim free, um, breaststroke in school, and just trying to learn to learning swim freestyle, hard, I wasn't yeah. a great swimmer. So I was in the second pack, and you we lost time, and I could yeah. never catch up, and I was really frustrated. And then my coach Darren was like, "Okay, Lisa, we have four years. Let's do something good in London in four years' time." And that's when I kind of got on a mission for London. And then you get to London, and um, seriously, you you had a phenomenal race. Oh, it's one of my best races ever, together, right? Ever, one fifty nine yeah. forty eight, exact same time as <laughs> Nicholas yeah. Berg. Exact same time. And the runtime was it thirty three, thirty eight? Something maybe? like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For, yeah and it, it felt w- easy. <laughs> it was no pressure on the run. It was it, amazing. But it's when you have a race like that that is so good, you all you can do is sort of tip your hat to the other person that they, okay she outleaned me but you can't beat you like like you said you were crying after the last olympics were you crying after that one? Oh, i was i was over the moon happy yeah. it was incredible you um, won the silver medal so you know when you're leading into the olympics and you're in the village and on tv the whole time there's images from the different arenas and right. the different sports and you see the presentation and you have the the national anthem and you have the flowers and they're like oh my god like you know here are three medalists at the Olympics and they get to stand on the podium in front of the families and the big crowds and they're on the TV and that are the winners of the Olympics. Right. It's the three right. girls or boys on the podium. And for me to be one of those people up on the podium with my family, friends, everyone on the grandstands, it was incredible. Yeah. And I really felt like a winner. I'm from Sweden, which is a small country. Yes. I think we had seventh medals in London that year. So you were to one, be of, one of them. Yeah. And Afterwards, I realized like the way we raced and the way the race panned out, um, there was a lot of Swedes who took that to heart. Right. And even I think if I would have won it with a five, ten second gap, that would have been less interest than the way it happened. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's funny that you say that because if you think back in our history in the sport of triathlon, I mean, Julie Moss finished second right in the 82 Ironman yeah. nobody remembers who won no. <laughs> right yeah. because her crawl and yeah. then this last Paralympics you had Kendall Gretsch won by one second over Lauren Parker in, mm. the, in, in the hand cycle division and you know, I told Lauren I said Lauren, nobody the silver it, it's uh, you lost by a second so hard but you this race 
impacted other people. Mm. People, the, the amount of media that came out of that, right? Yeah. Because it was close. Yeah, because it was, it was a sprint really finish. <laughs> yeah, it was I mean, close as a dead heat, <laughs> right? So it, it, when you come off of that and come off of the high, how did things change for you in Sweden? The Olympics is everything in Sweden. Right, it's yeah. People don't really know Iron Man or things no, like, like that. No, like even here, like there's no Swedish media here. Right. They don't know about it. The Olympics is like, you know, are you going to the Olympics? And if you win a medal at the Olympics or become an Olympic champion, right. it changes the world. Uh, and you get to, like here, I get to triathlon people. Like everyone who's interested in triathlon, they know about Ironman Bar Champs. Right. The Olympics, everyone knows about. Right. So that's a big difference. And it really like changed my platform back home. Big time. I, I'm, I, to this day, right? Mm. You have an, There's not that many Olympic silver medalists from Sweden. No, not in no. history. Yeah, true. Yeah, so that, 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 that it, in terms of your profile, speaking the groups, getting kids involved in the sport, I'm mm. guessing that's important to you. And I think triathlon too, it's a good, it's um, like easy, easy to understand. It's swimming, biking, running. Everyone, you know, knows or could feel or imagine everybody's how hard it is. It. You know, yeah. yeah everybody's it's done not a like you know, sailing or fencing where you don't right. really understand. It's straightforward. Everyone understands this is you know, some hard stuff. Right. Uh, and it's simple and first across the line wins. So that's also makes it easier to like, you know, communicate what you're doing and yes. get people to understand it. And then when you went to Rio in 2016, was uh, what was that experience like? Oh, it was actually quite horrible. Um, injured? Yeah, I was injured in the lead up. So I had to get all my points in the oh, in so the you, last year. So you had to really travel so raced, all over the world. I was semi-injured the whole time, and I had to race all over the world and race when I didn't really trust my body. Yeah. Uh, and I had to race a lot, like really all over the world, Ugh. almost every single like weekend. And uh, once I got the heads up for the games, I was smashed. My body was yeah. finished. Yeah. So I, I got there. I got in pretty good shape. I made the front group, and then my run was nowhere was where it should be. Yeah. And you know what? And to be honest, uh, compared to London, uh, Rio was just not. It just didn't have like the same It's difficult, bars. you know, when you had that top experience. Oh, my You know, God. you get flowers from the prime minister, and you get to go to the <laughs> embassy. And then you go to Rio, and it's like, you know, you go back in the bus of everyone else. Right, exactly. <laughs> And nothing happens. Where's my flowers? <laughs> exactly. Where's the prime minister? <laughs> exactly. Where, where the heck did so he go? So it's a little bit of a, like, yeah. mm. So w what are your goals here? Uh, oh, this is an interesting one. Uh, I'm I'm still hum humbled by Ironman. Ironman is a very that. humbling distance. It yeah, is. I'm still learning. So but it's a good distance for you because it is. It's challenging mentally, physically, emotionally, all of that. Yeah, and I think my biggest problem here is that I'm such a race person, and with short course you used to race people and you react to everything. Can't do that here. You can't do it. No, exactly. You have to really be patient and. Forget trust your plan it. yeah forget about the other people just so for me you. it's a one person race <laughs> on saturday <laughs> exactly and you like this course though it's a really hard course yeah uh, it's a bit frightening to be honest um especially if it gets windy yeah <laughs> well i can like it's you see you're a great bike handler there's though. so many opportunities to hurt yourself on the bike so if you f you know you feel strong you yes. could easily like just go over and, and then you come up much. through a snow canyon mm. at 100 miles when you're toasted yeah exactly <laughs> yeah, <that's not> good. <laughs> so hopefully i can you know get it together and keep calm and love it not doing things stupid Lisa, it's always such a treat to chat with you i learn something every time <laughs> <laughs> we get it's super nice like every time it's breakfast with bob you know it's serious business exactly it so it's serious. time to get like your game face on and do something brilliant it works. So it's good Pancho to be here. man's here exactly. this is the real <laughs> and you, you so hopefully you come to kona and get yeah to see that's what man i'm in his to. his natural <laughs> habitat this is he's a little that would be a, a dream coming there's true no for me. point here right <laughs> love is a beautiful thing love it's a beautiful thing and breath with bob Cheer. Thank you, Pacho Man. Hold on. We'll be right back.